So with this session, um, Kids Radio is kicking off a series of events called Tea Time. Starting in 2021, in January, I will be speaking uh, each month to a different colleague from all over Europe, just getting to know the children's film landscape in their country. And uh, we're starting with this first session with a big overview um, with Sinja and Pedro's knowledge and my knowledge about um, the situation in Europe in general. Kicking this off, um, I would ask my very most important first question to Sinja and Petri, which is, what kind of cup of tea do you guys have with you? Well, I have this cup. It says, hello to you, old friends. Uh, it's a very sweet message to all of you. And uh, it's, I, I'm drinking herbal tea, by the way. That's my tea contribution for today. Petri, what's your contribution? Um, it is the adventure mug from the Moomin series. So the Moomins are out on out camping. They have a bit of a dark weather night, but also the nice light giving them some yeah, light. So... Uh, that is my message. It's nice to be outside now because you will have to be so much inside. Perfect. So that was the most important question of this evening. The second most important question of this evening to kick uh, off all those five points, I think, at once is what do you guys think is needed in a country to have such a vivid film culture as you have at Senior in the Netherlands? And Petri, you're speaking for all of the Scandinavian countries, I would say, because you are here and there, um, have been here and there. So what do we need? What kind of atmosphere do we need in, in a country to, to have what you guys have? First of all, I think that it's, it's super uh, important always to have a strong lobby for children's films. And you just mentioned that. And I think that uh, you shouldn't underestimate the value of doing it because many times in these kind of sessions as well, we are all among uh, friends thinking that this is really important. But I'm working for the Netherlands Film Fund and we have a priority for children films. Uh, and nevertheless, it's, uh, it's a, on a daily basis, I have to raise my hand in my organization and, and tell uh, everybody that children films is as important as the grown-up films and maybe more important because it's the future uh, audiences it's the it's the audience now but it's also the future audience of the grown-up films so to speak so I think it's very important that all of you listening and being here tonight that you that you feel that responsibility if you really think it's important you need to put it on the agenda all the time um, now, I think that, um, coming to your question, Anna, I think that uh, the Netherlands has a very long tradition uh, in children's culture. Um, it's, it's, you need consistency and you need, um, well, like Rome wasn't built in a day. So you, you need to have um, that kind of patience to, to build something as a children's film industry or uh, a good environment. Um, and I think that the national strategies of, of film agencies uh, is playing a very important part in that. Um, but of course, um, schools is playing in, in also a very important part in education, uh, education uh, uh, of children and, and uh, the knowledge of, of the national films and international films. So there are many different aspects and elements creating a good environment. Um, and I think that we are lucky that I, what I said, that we have had continuity for a long time, also within the public television, um, stressing the importance of children and, and being aware of that it's not less expensive to produce children productions, even maybe it's more expensive. So um, I think that we have had very good ambassadors for children film in the past. And I see it as a personal responsibility to bring that forth uh, and to keep that. It, as far as my power, I'm not so important, but as far as I can, what I can do. Um, so I think it's, it's, you, do, you, you can't relax for a moment because it's very big com competition also, like you know, about money and different priorities. Um, but I think that we, we have a good situation in the Netherlands uh, for a long time. And that also, of course, creates, uh, it's like a good circle. It creates more interest if you have good productions and, and it actually has some kind of impact. Uh, it will attract also talents, uh, filmmakers, scriptwriters 
to dig into the children film. And uh, I think you're doing a wonderful job being an advocate at the Netherlands uh, Film Fund for, for children's film. And this is actually something that we have in the second point of the Weimar Declaration that we need to appoint an advocate in, in Brussels to also uh, always have us in mind and have the children's film uh, world in mind when doing uh, politics in Brussels. We still haven't found that person, but we are on the lookout. So if any one of you guys know some important person in Brussels that would like to take on this job, just uh, let me know. And uh, Petri, what, what would you say about the Scandinavian countries? Is it also the big tradition, the big children's film culture that is giving you so much like wind in the back? Yeah, that's, that's very much true. But still, I am every now and then always surprised by, by when I look at the, the results and the numbers and so on. I'm, it still surprises me that how, how well the uh, films for children and young people are actually performing also in terms of in terms in the box office for example that they actually bring great revenues so this is <laughs> this is also a big surprise to me sometimes that actually they are they are really performing well and uh, and the same thing goes with uh, television stations so it's 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 politically important but it's also important in terms of the audiences that there is really a demand and a need so in a way the wind is very strong what is what is of course challenging is that uh, The, the changes are so rapid in the uh, in the society at the moment, so we can't really. We are some of us, at least I feel that sometimes I'm too old for this because uh, my kids are so grown up already. And uh, so, I mean, how do I get the understanding and of, of what is actually needed and what is what is what the people are watching? So, so therefore, I mean, the constant. Uh, Continuity issue, what uh, Signe was mentioning, is extremely important. That we need to we need to keep re-educating ourselves, and we need to build our understanding, and we need to understand that there is a change, also in terms of the platforms. And uh, of course, now today we are talking about film, but come on, I mean, in many of our countries, you can't watch a film today because the cinemas are closed, and. Uh, so the films probably have some other platforms where they are playing, and this is equally important for us. But uh, well, well, yeah, we are in a lucky, lucky position, of course, because of the respect for for the children's culture in general. So you you just mentioned a topic that is very important to all of us: the current situation. And I think there there shouldn't be any online event there out there at the moment just ignoring the situation. So did you guys have did you did you notice anything maybe not positive but like uh, some numbers about uh, national film productions being now more in the cinemas because the US I mean they did not distribute their movies so in Germany we really saw that uh, the art house cinemas um, were open and they cared for their audiences and they really tried to stay in contact with them and they also played a lot from their repertoire and and just just stayed in contact with them did you did you guys notice similar things in in your territories well i could say uh, especially from the nordic point of view of course the nordic countries every one of them is like uh, only 10 times smaller than than germany so in a way we don't we don't neither of the none of the countries have a separate cinema chain for art house films so i mean it's more or less that the big big cinemas are playing art house films and the commercial films uh, in the same cinema so in a way we don't have that split but what i can tell you is that uh, of course the american films are not there but the local films have been performing really well in all of the countries maybe except not for sweden but i mean finland yeah. norway and denmark at least And uh, out of the local films, they have even been receiving as much uh, audience as they did last year. So in a way, the drop in the audience is caused by the American films, of course. And some of the domestic films have been doing even better than before. So in a way that they have been having better access to the screens, they have also been able to generate audiences. And this goes very specifically also for the children's films. Uh, so that their audiences haven't declined up until now when the situation, of course, is a bit more drastic that you have different kind of restrictions that how many people can enter the cinema now. And uh, so it's, it, it was better in September, October. It's been getting worse now. But uh, the positive thing is that actually 
people do want to go to the movies if there is a possibility and they even pick up the local content. So this is the good message from the earlier months of the pandemic. What is the case in, in the Netherlands? Because you, you closed your cinemas also completely and then mid-November, uh, I think, uh, they opened again, right? That's right. We had, I think the cinemas were closed for two weeks. Um, despite that not more than 30 visitors are allowed in the cinemas, though, and despite of those two weeks, I, uh, our films has gained more space and visibility than before. So uh, for the children films, I think it has been quite a good situation um, because all the films from the American majors were, were pulled out uh, in the cinema uh, programming. Um, so the lack of competition, I think, um, helped actually our children films to, to have as many, what, it's difficult to say what would have happened if we didn't have the corona situation. But uh, regarding the situation, I think we're doing quite fine. And um, I talked with the producer today about a film that were, was released in September and it's still in the cinema. This would be impossible for a Dutch children film uh, in a normal situation. So I think that um, the art house cinemas, uh, they have struggled, of course, because they are smaller. Uh, but I think for the big chains that are normally depending on big releases from America, they have had a, uh, a lot better um, results because of the, of the Dutch films that they have been playing. And what I hope is that that relationship will, will, will stay um, because... We all need each other. The, the change, uh, the cinema chains also need Dutch content. And I, I, I know that they like Dutch content, but it's not so easy for the, for, for independent, uh, also not for European independent movies to, to stay in the big chains. So hopefully this will create more space also in the future, but I don't know. But for the children, Dutch children films, it's had, it hasn't been a bad situation. Very interesting to hear and I just um, um, sneaked a peek on my Weimar declaration that is lying next to me and our last point really on the agenda was about discovery space cinema. So the cinema as a, as a, as a space where children and a young audience can go and experience film and especially with festivals is of course something that is very, very dear to our hearts. But Sidney also in the beginning you said that, or even if it was Petri, I can't remember, um, that we can't ignore other ways of watching movies because we see in the situation that you c sometimes can't go to the cinema. And this is true also for people living in rural areas. I mean, I don't know what the, what the case is in, in your regions, but in Germany, you have um, cinemas in the big cities, of course, several of them. Then in smaller cities, you still sometimes have a cinema, but then in the rural areas, you have no possibility to go to the cinema at all. So how do we actually reach the children? How are they having access to that? So what, what, are, what is happening in, in your regions um, concerning streaming? Well, in the Nordics, I could say that it is going to be very interesting what is actually happening during this Christmas time, because uh, what we know from, at least there is already one publicized case from Sweden where the new film of uh, Thomas Alfredsson, the new Jönsson Ligon film, that will be opening on SVOD platform during Christmas instead of the Christmas uh, cinema release, because they can't get the audiences that they would want. And this is, of course, an interesting case. It's a big bit of a dispute as well, because uh, the director is not so happy about this. But still, in my view, it is also an opportunity during this holiday season to provide something for the people that can't go out or can't go to the cinemas, even if they would want to go there. So um, that's going to be interesting to see how, what are the effects of that. Uh, and this is the case that I know, but I think that there will be some others that are still pending. So, I mean, quite quite rapid changes might be possible because of the situation where we are at the moment. And some of these changes probably will have an, an effect also later on, on how, how films are going to be watched and where they are going to be watched. So I think that there will be some uh, disruption, of course, but maybe also some of the disruption will, will work for the good of uh, good of the audiences in a way. Yeah, I, I think that streaming services, we, we need to kind of upgrade them a little bit. I'm talking 
from the perspective of the film fund now, because I think it's also a very democratic way of distributing films. If you really want to reach an audience, like Anna said, in rural areas, it's not so easy if you are a young uh, person to, to see the quality films uh, that are very accessible maybe in the cities. Um, so I would really like to, to, to see in the future how we can maybe use the streaming services in a different way and maybe make, make them also more interested in our local uh, productions. Um, here during the pandemic, we have seen that the also quality streaming uh, services, we have like Pico and Cineville, uh, they have had a, a great amount of, of, of more uh, attracting more audiences, of course, because the cinemas were partly closed. But I think also that maybe the, the screening habits will change because of the pandemic and we will maybe as an audience get more used to getting access to the films quicker. Although this is, of course, with, with the whole discussion about windows and financing, still a difficult um, question. But I think that the young audience would gain more if we could uh, get more access with with our films to to the streaming services. And you guys in the Netherlands were the first, I think, in Europe to actually make Netflix pay, right? That's true. And I think that's the way to go. I think that we, we really need um, to strengthen the partnership with also with international uh, companies like Netflix. And we need them to invest more in local products. And that's also a from a commercial point of view from, from the provider. I think that they, they want that. And I think it would be, it's silly to, to uh, well, to lock them out, to, to lock a company like Netflix out of your local financing structure. So it's, I think it's quite, it's, 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 I think it's a good sign. But of course we have also uh, very strong uh, services like Disney Plus, um, that was launched recently um, in many countries in Europe. Um, and they will always compete I, with, with our local content. So, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm curious to see how that will develop, the competition on the streaming services as well. Absolutely. We're, we're having an eye on, on that. But still, like I said, um, most dear to our heart is uh, the cinema. And uh, Kitzrik, you actually dedicated this whole year before we actually knew what was happening this year to the Discovery Space Cinema. And we had uh, several um, online sessions now, we have to say. So we had a kickoff at Berlinale um, showing different best practices from the, from the cinema world. Also inviting MUBI, actually, an online platform that is curating uh, art house content and we asked them if they would not want to include also a young audience session and uh, apparently they are discussing that from time to time uh, with their colleagues in, in London uh, so we never know maybe there's an art house um, online streaming platform for, for the young audience also um, out there in the future and uh, what, what struck me the most and I mean we knew that before but I think it's now more important uh, than ever that coming to a cinema must be a special experience for children you can't as a cinema expect to just program a movie and then the audience will just come that is just not working anymore and that will be even more so the case when the cinemas open again because everyone has big flat screens now and a sound system and several streaming services um, at home so going to the cinema really needs to give you something there and th that is the being together, watching a movie together, and for the young audience to, to get in contact with it and to actually understand the value of going to the cinema. I think there's a lot of work out there and we saw a lot of best practices, um, children's houses, cultural spaces, normal cinemas doing a great job, but they all had additional programming and that always or nearly always goes also via film education. So Sinja, in the Netherlands, you, you had something great coming together there also with the support of the Dutch Film Fund. And I'm sure I'm going to use it as a best practice in the future as well. Your, your film hubs, I think you call them, right? That's right. I think we were lucky uh, in 2019 because the Ministry of Culture and Education gave a big impulse for film education. And in our time, it speaks for itself. It's so important to understand images and, and also to, to understand film. 
um, and get uh, used to different kind of storytelling in film. So we have been working a lot about on, on uh, strength, strengthening the infrastructure that we had uh, and the collaboration between uh, teachers and, and the film museum that we have and, and um, also the network of film education. But something new, like you mentioned, Anne, was the initiation of six um, film hubs, uh, film in, in regional hubs that are actually now uh, just starting to work and they are very hands-on helping teachers and, and um, schools to find their way in film and how to use it in schools. Um, and I think that is a great way to, to approach uh, the fil film education because it's so easy, at least from a point of view, from a national point of view, to think that you have everything um, online or you, you have film festivals working also with film education. Uh, but I think if you really want to reach out to children in the region, you need to be more proactive and you need to, to encourage teachers in a different way because you always have teachers that really uh, are interested in film. And I think there is a digital revolution going on that with Corona uh, situation, uh, schools have been extremely depending on internet and luckily in Holland we have a good uh, internet uh, so so there are many things that that helped us to 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 develop this film education strategy but I think that um, I mean we're not so far as Scotland for instance because they embedded their film education in the curriculum uh, but that's actually what we are aiming at. So we, we want everybody to, at school to, to use film in different ways, not only in the cultural uh, program, uh, but also to be aware of how much you can use film in, others, um, in other subjects like history or, or language. So, uh, so this is, I think, a great opportunity to also work regionally and also to find children um, that might be interested in film that wouldn't be able to come to a festival program or is not living in a big city uh, with all the accessibility that you have in a big city. And I, I um, yeah, I think that that is a, a good way to go. And of course, we're not there yet. And an impulse uh, of three millions that we got is not enough. Maybe, uh, as I said, you need continuation. But I think that we are uh, with the six um, film hubs. I think that's a very good start. I mean, that would be amazing to have here. I mean, in Germany, it would have to be 16 because we have 16 regions. I don't know how many there are in Poland, but I guess you guys in the big country in Poland also need many more film hubs than the Netherlands do. But maybe um, let me share some something that is more accessible because we can't all have those film hubs next year that, that the Netherlands Film Fund so um, graciously um, established in, in the Netherlands. But um, I had a lot of contact this year with uh, the British Film Institute, the Danish Film Institute and uh, Vision Kino, a film education institution in Germany. And they have been working together in a program funded by Creative Europe um, first, they had a study on film education and what you would need in film education. And they actually wanted to uh, create something that lasts. So um, they put together over the past couple of years a massive open online course, a MOOC, as they call it. It's called From Framework to Impact. And they had two um, sessions, one could say sessions this year, one in, in the beginning of the year and one again in autumn. And that is an online course that is um, available on the Future Learn platform and they will keep it open, the course. So you can still join. It's more fun if everybody is doing it at the same time. I did it in the beginning during the first lockdown. Um, and it's four weeks of learning on film education. So it's um, open, it's accessible, it's for teachers, it's for people working in film education, wanting to know more. It's about techniques in film education, learning about film literacy, about different tasks that you can do with your, with your class. And they gathered um, best practices from, from Great Britain, from Denmark, from Germany, and also from France. So the, um, I think the Cinematheque Francaise was on board as, uh, with it as well. Um, so that is a great tool that was published uh, this year 
um, to make film education learning more accessible all over Europe on all over the world. There were a lot of people also joining from Egypt, apparently a lot of people from Egypt uh, in this course, the, the colleagues told me. But we don't only have to talk about our young audience, we also have to talk about our colleagues. And uh, Petri um, said earlier in, in a call that we had before to prepare the session that he wanted to know what's happening with training because training is so, so very important to make uh, people in the industry aware of um, what difficulties you actually encounter when writing for children, when producing for children, when producing with children, um, which I think is a much more difficult job than uh, working with adults. Um, so Petri, we, we spoke about something that happened in Norway a couple of years ago. Could you give us some insights on that? Yeah, I mean, it was a big investment from the Norwegian Film Institute to, to, to start, I mean, financing the development of projects that had very, very broad access. I mean, that could be accessed by a very broad group of people and uh, with tutors from outside. So in a way, I mean, the core of that project and in most of the time, I mean, they were Norwegian projects, but but uh, for Norwegian writers, but actually, uh, actually, I mean, what was important is that somebody from the outside came to look at that as well. And uh, I, I do then tend to think that uh, the writing part is, of course, very sensitive when you are doing these projects and, and you have to say, stay close to home. But then again, I mean, opening up to outside eyes would always be beneficial because then you get get a view from the other person, from the other market. So in a way, these kind of combinations, I think, are needed. And uh, I mean, this is something that I could talk for ages, but I'm immediately jumping into something else, which is really the thing that you mentioned and uh, the co-development with, with children, because this is, this is, of course, or with young people that you can't really do anything serious for uh, young audiences unless you have a connection to the, to the people who are at that edge. This is, well, SCAM, of course, the Norwegian one is the perfect example of that, 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 that made the world by, by proper research on the certain specific age group of young children, young girls, and then it became a global hit for every, every kind of an audience. So in a way, researching a specific uh, age group and co-working with them is another way of uh, doing things at the moment. And also this, this, this would involve all kinds of platforms that the content should be accessible at. But I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I, I, you have to stop me because I, can't, I don't stop otherwise. But uh, when you talk about writing this core, at, very national, but then when you are co-developing, actually then at that point, you should maybe uh, work together with somebody who is from another country. When you are already co-financing or producing, you should maybe try to develop tools uh, for projects to come together somehow uh, in order to broaden the view and broaden the access. So I'm looking forward to getting more these kind of workshops uh, that are working for the adult or the, the grown-up films quite nicely in Europe at the moment. But I mean, there is very little uh, for children, children's films. I mean, of course, Sinekid has one and Malmo has one and uh, there is the... Uh, kids program real young for documentaries but uh, they are not enough unfortunately but there there was actually one other program that was launched uh, last year which is the kids kino lab which um is uh, majorly done by by a polish association the new horizons association and what i find most interesting um what they're doing is they got countries partner countries on board that still have a long way to go actually in, in producing children's content. So they have Greece on board. Um, there were children's film and children's series projects uh, coming, coming out of this Kids Kino Lab. And uh, I feel like there are so many Greek projects now, now coming along and they have not had any children's films for the past eight years or even more. So they... They, I would say they don't even know what a children's film is, a national one. They have a lot of this um, American content and then they have a huge other problem, which is their population is just so small that they don't get any distribution company dubbing for the smallest audience. I mean, 
from a certain age on, you can read subtitles and that's okay. I know you do that in the Scandinavian countries and in the Netherlands where in Germany are very spoiled, everything is dubbed for us. But um, if your territory is just so small, nobody's doing that because it's so expensive. And I think that's another massive problem Sinia, did, did you have, because you're also working a lot with different countries also, um, not only in Europe, um, did you encounter those kinds of problems as well? Yes, I, I have um, encountered those problems. And I think it, you, you need also to educate the, the filmmakers and the, 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 the audience. And so there's, a, like you say, there is a long way to go in, in countries that hasn't got a strong children's film culture and also is not used to hear different languages maybe uh, and I think there are different ways to go in that I think that uh, the most important thing is to to um, stimulate the talent that you have and I think that Europe has a lot of talent and a lot of interesting stories also for children so I'm thinking a little I think that like what you're saying I think the scripts labs are very important playing an important role in exchanging that and and uh, stimulating filmmakers and, and the financiers to invest in children programs and, and, and films. But I'm also thinking maybe, you know, in the, in the terms of co-production, maybe we should try and investigate if it would be possible to have a mutual strategy. I think that, like I said, I think the national strategies from the film agencies are very important. And I'm wondering also if we really think that children films are important maybe we should try and get a mutual strategy how to do that in development as well, what we're talking about now, um, and also in distribution. Uh, that could go for like training, production and distribution. I think that the, the, it would be possible to think of a strategy that could suit our, the, the, necess the necessity of having good um, local um, children films because there are many small territories and they can never, I think that it's super important that they develop their own stories. But I think that as a area, I think Europe should be more aware of what we could do for each other. And maybe, this has, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking on you, to you now, Petra, because I'm thinking maybe, you know, the, the Nordic Film Fund and Television Fund where you used yeah. to work could play a big role in that. Or maybe we could set up a North European collaboration to start with. We should set, definitely set up a collaboration. I was thinking that, I mean, it is, has been possible within the literature, I mean, for children and youth, that, that they, they do travel. And some of the stories are, of course, based on fairy tales, but then there are some contemporary stories uh, that actually are translated and then travel. And they are very attractive to the audiences. So, you know, in a way, I don't, I don't see why film couldn't do the same. But I do understand being, having been a national funder as well, that there is a national viewpoint that the national audience is, of course, the most important one, especially, especially for the TV stations. But maybe here, I mean, the, uh, the SVOD platforms might have a different, different take and that could be also, I mean, helpful in terms of getting, getting a more diverse content uh, out there. So, and I, I do agree with you absolutely about combining the training related to distribution and marketing as well to the development of the project. So this is something that really, I mean, interests me. So maybe we should <laughs> keep talking about this and not just keep talking about our device, device something that would be uh, beneficial. Yeah. So that's a good end of our talk, I would say. Um, I just glimpsed at my Weimar declaration and we have the point strategic infrastructure. I think this is exactly <laughs> what we just spoke about. This is nothing that can happen in a couple of months. But uh, I see a task force forming here out of this evening talk that we had. Yes. <laughs> and thank you so much, Petri and Sinje, for, for joining me in this Tea Time talk. And also a huge thank you to everyone who listened in to our conversation. This was just the kickoff of a series of talks to come. From now on, I will invite a guest from a different country each month to talk about national structures. Join us each for Thursday a month for a 10 to 15 minute talk. Next up will be Lennart Ström, director of Embrain Forum in Malmö, Sweden. I'm looking forward to dive into all that Sweden has to offer for the young audience with him. See you soon on February 25th.